What's going on everyone? My name is Jonathan Bedell and today we are going to continue our discussion on entropy and constructing statistical mechanics. An important result of today is that we will recover the thermodynamic definition of temperature from first principles. In particular, we will use Jane's principle to derive the thermal distribution and recover key results from thermodynamics. This will help us define what temperature is and understand its intimate relationship with energy. Okay, so suppose you and your friends decide to play some type of game that incorporates dice. My favorite, for example, is Liar's Dice. Your friend hands you a particular die to use during the game. Your first roll, you, you get a five. The second, a second five. The third, you get a two. Then on your fourth roll, you get a four. And then you all of a sudden get a five again. This goes on all game, and it seems like 5 is much more common than the other numbers. At the end of the game, your friend makes sure to take the die back and leaves. So that's pretty weird, right? You didn't keep detailed notes about all of the rolls, so you wouldn't be able to estimate what the probabilities were for each face of the die. As your friend leaves, however, he gives you one piece of information. The average face value of this die is 4.62. It is from this place that we might want to start to apply Gibbs algorithm and embrace Jane's principle of maximum entropy to determine the probabilities associated with each face value. The information that we have is the following. We have six outcomes, which are the faces of the die. To each face, we wish to assign a probability that we will get that face value on any given roll. For an ordinary die, this would be one-sixth of the time for each face, as long as the die was fair and balanced. This would correspond to an expected value of 3.5 for the face value of the die. However, in our case, we have been told that the expected value of ours is actually 4.62. So our task now is to give our best, most unbiased guess as to what the probabilities are given our limited amount of information. While this might seem strange for a physicist to use this example for intuition, it is precisely the idea of not knowing the probabilities a priori, but having access to information about averages that we are interested in. For example, the problems of statistical mechanics can be summarized as follows. Given some expected value of f of x, with ignorance towards what the probability distribution is, compute what the expected value of g of x is. Stated abstractly away from the physical problem, this question seems quite absurd, doesn't it? We are often given an expected value of energy, for example, and asked to compute things like magnetization, specific heat, and so on. So we are now ready to employ the Gibbs algorithm to our example, which will inform our discussion later for more physically motivated situations. To do this, we use a method from calculus called the method of Lagrange multipliers and our definition of entropy. To use this, we use Jane's principle, that is, we wish to maximize the Shannon entropy as given here under the constraints that the mean face value is 4.62 and the probabilities all sum to 1. We accomplish this by introducing the Lagrangian function for our problem. In red, we show the entropy in blue, the average face value, and in green, the sum of all of the probabilities. Beta and alpha are called Lagrange multipliers, and we will pick them in such a way that our resulting probability distribution agrees with our constraints. To find the best probability distribution, we only need to find the stationary points of our Lagrangian function with beta and alpha being choosable parameters. To find the stationary points, we set the first derivative of the Lagrangian function zero for all probabilities. This is rather straightforward, and you get an expression that only depends on, on each j. Solving for pj gives you an expression for the probability before the constraints are applied. For some people, this expression might actually start to feel familiar. Can you guess what beta would be uh, when we return to more physical problems? We see that the probability expression 
has two exponential functions multiplying into each other. The first only depends on alpha, and the second depends on beta and the index j. Applying the constraints to the first exponential function, we need to choose alpha so that the probabilities all sum to 1. Therefore, we choose alpha such that this is precisely the case. This defines our partition function and forces all of the probabilities to sum to 1. So we are left with a probability distribution that looks like this for each value of j. That is actually quite the beautiful formula. So how do we actually choose beta? We find beta by applying the constraint that the expected face value is 4.62. Finding beta numerically, for example, is actually quite easy. For example, on Wolfram Alpha, we can ask the website to solve for beta divided by k. If you see here, I have written the expected value of the face value and set it equal to 4.62. This give, gives us a value of approximately negative 0.425 for beta. So we can see here that the, that the solution is also unique. There was only one beta that this function could have chosen to be equal to 4.62. So what about the regular face value for normal dice that is 3.5? Well, let's give it a go. As you can see here, I have set the equation now equal to 3.5. And you can see that the solution on the graph corresponds to beta over k is equal to 0. And in fact, I believe they give it to us here. Yep, the integer solution is x is equal to 0. So this corresponds to all the face values being equally likely. Every pj here would then be 1 sixth according to Jane's principle of maximum entropy. I'll leave the equation in the description if anyone wants to fool around with this on Wolfram Alpha. Okay, so let's finally move back into physics. Let us say that we have n possible microstates. You can use the example of spins from before but what we're about to do is much more general. To each microstate, we assign some energy Ej, and we are ignorant to which microstate we are actually in, so we proceed using Jane's principle of maximum entropy. That is, we assign probabilities Pj to each microstate and wish to compute on average what the system is doing. We are only given the expected value of energy, not the definite value of energy, like in the previous video. An example situation where we only know the energy on average would be embedding our system of interest inside a bath of energy that is much bigger. The bath in the system would then exchange energy, making it difficult to determine the precise energy of our system. An example of a bath could be, for example, the air in your room, while a much smaller system might be some object in your room. From the dice example, we have more or less already solved the problem, except instead of six possible microstates, we instead have n possible microstates. Then the resulting probability distribution is, is given by the following expression you see here on your screen where we have replaced the parameter k by the Boltzmann constant kb, and energy takes the role that the face value of the dice did previously. Now, what does beta actually mean in this situation? Just as before, beta determines the distribution's energy. From this perspective, beta is the determining factor for our energy and sets our energy scale. But is it really something more familiar in disguise? To find out, let's throw our probabilities back into the formula for entropy and see what we get. For the sake of conversation, I will simply show the simplified result. The thermal entropy is acquired here by typing our distribution that we derived back into the Shannon entropy formula. Here we see that it is quite the simple expression that depends on the Boltzmann constant, the partition function, beta, and the average energy. Now from here, we can take the partial derivative of s with respect to our energy. 
In the, in the last video, we introduced this as the definition of the thermodynamic temperature. Therefore, we see that beta is actually the inverse temperature and is intimately related to thermodynamics. We can also reorganize this expression to find the Helmholtz free energy. The Helmholtz free energy is the thermodynamic free energy when temperature is held at a constant value. Looking back with our knowledge of what beta is, we can also view Jane's maximization principle as a process of minimizing the Helmholtz free energy. This is actually extremely consistent with thermodynamics, which requires the free energy to be at a minimum for equilibrium. Therefore, through this argument of ignorance, we have recovered key thermodynamic expressions, which is a major triumph of statistical mechanics. Thanks for watching, guys. Next time, we will take this new probability distribution that we have here, and we will derive the ideal gas law using a quite a beautiful trick to get us started. As always, guys, I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.